Daniel chapter 11, verse 31. Now, Daniel 11, 20 to 45, but you know, what we're reading tonight is all about the Antichrist and tribulation period. Everybody wants to know about the, tri the, the tribulation. They want to know about the Antichrist, but they don't want to go to the books of the Bible. They want one specific book because they're lazy. I just heard another preacher say that today. They're lazy. Or they don't care. And arms, verse 1131, shall stand on his part. They shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. That's the Holy of Holies. Shall take away the daily sacrifice. You know, there was a lamb in the morning and a lamb at night. The law is coming back. He's going to stop it. And he's going to enter the Holy of Holies. He's going to put his image. And shall place the abomination. There's the image that makes desolate. This is an abomination of desolation that Jesus said that, that Daniel the prophet spoke about. The most holy place that's coming to be is going to be soiled by the Antichrist. That was once soiled by Titus 70 AD that was soiled by the Babylonians and Chaldeans in Jeremiah's time. History repeats itself. You know, I'm reading the news today, and I, I, I read the headlines. And supposedly there's this expensive yacht of the Russians that's been confiscated. World War II, there was a yacht that was of great value that was confiscated by the United States. That yacht belonged to Adolf Hitler. And that yacht today is the United States Coast Guard USS Eagle. And that the, 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 the head part of that ship is an eagle. And that eagle used to hold an emblem of the Shoshishka, I can't say, swastika. That's been removed. History repeats itself. And such as do wickedly against the covenant, Shall he corrupt by flatteries? And flatteries has been warned about in the book of Proverbs. But the people that do know their God shall be strong, the Jews, and there's some Gentiles, and do exploit. There are Gentiles that know not God. They're going to help the Jew. And they don't even know what they're doing. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Here's 144,000. Yet they shall fall by sword, by flame, by captivity, and by spoil many days. So there will be Jews and Gentiles who are going to die in the tribulation period. And their death is going to be for the word of God. Not just a common death. And I saw under the altar the souls of them that had been slain, beheaded for the word of God. Here it is. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping, and that's an old term for help. Past participle. With a little help. Oh, God, send, you know, oh, ain't you helping me? Oh, God, I got troubles. I got problems. Oh, God, help me. There are going to be people in the tribulation period. They're going to go through fall. They're going to go through sword. They're going to go through flame. They're going to go through captivity. They're going to go through the spoil. They're going to go have Satan after them. And they're going to get little help. And if that little help comes through the Gentile nations, those Gentile nations will be rewarded. Time in the millennium. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. There's the flatteries of the Antichrist. Be careful of those that flatter. As Proverbs would tell you. And some of them of understanding shall fall.
you can know. But it's for a testing, a trial, for a purpose of cleansing. In the end, Revelation 6, 11, 3, 5, and 7, 9, and 14. Because it says to try them, to purge, and make them white. Even to the time of the end, the second advent. Because it is yet for a time appointed. The second advent is dated on God's calendar. And there are going to be people who know what they're doing, understand what they're doing in the tribulation period, and they're still going to fall. Uh, does that not point to the Christian? We will be tried. We will be put to a test. Because God wants us to see who we are and what we are. And he wants us to confess so he can cleanse and purge us and forgive us where we fail, where we fall. They say, you know, when you fall, you get up, wipe off the dirt and move on. No, when you fall, confess it. Get it right with God. And for a Christian... All of sin comes short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. God knows when we're going to die. And we can change it. We can make it earlier. Smoke cigarettes. We can lengthen it. Be faithful to God. And the king, the king, the king, shall do according to his will. He shall exalt himself, pride, and magnify himself above every God, small g, and speak marvelous things against the God, g, of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, the tribulation period, for that this is determined shall be done. It's already been put forth. Neither shall he rega regard the God, capital G, of his fathers. The Antichrist, the false prophet, has Jewish roots in him. Nor the desire of woman. Nor regard any God, small g. I don't care about the Indian gods. I don't care about Allah. I don't care about Mary. I don't care about Baloney. Me. Myself. And I. Even God, the Almighty God. I don't. Shall magnify himself above all. How? going to put that image that the false prophet makes of him. He's going to put it in the Holy of Holies where God's presence is supposed to be. Televised all worldwide. The news. Here we go. Breaking news. We start our news program. Start the music. Everyone bow down. Except Shadrach, Meshach. History is going to repeat itself. There are going to be men after people like Daniel. Hey, he, hey, 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 he, 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 he. go get him. He's a Jew. All right. This is the Antichrist. He's the God of all gods in the Antichrist. So, I'm glad I'm not going to be here. Now we have man above every God, marvelous saying God's a God. Neither shall he regard the God as far as desire women. There's many things like that. He won't care about women. Jesus said, Woe unto the women that give suck, woe unto them that are with child. 
Hey, you better have that mark. I don't care they're pregnant. Nor regard any God, he shall magnify himself above every God. But in his estate, he shall honor the God, capital G, of forces. May the force be with you, Luke. Use the force, Luke. Now, the God of forces. Now look at verse 38. But in his estate, he shall honor the God of forces. 36, he's against all the gods. Big G, little G. But the King James puts capital G-O-D for forces. Some don't like that. Because that G is Satan. Not God. Go ask George Lucas. He won't tell you about the God of the Bible. He'll tell you of the dark force. And Obi-Wan, who looks like a Jewish prophet of the Gentile. And Luke, who has the white outfit all through the, the movies. Until he turns black and gets to the dark side. Satan is the supreme God of all the forces. That's why it's a capital G. Of all the, 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 the realms and all the fascinations that religions have. Oh, look at this. We can take this bread and wine and we can hocus pocus it. The power and the force to make it the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ. We can take our children and change them into the power of the forces of aliens and other planets. And then you get into the new age and you get into all the nonsense. That's what that's about. The devil incarnate professes to be the true God. 2 Thessalonians 2.4 Now, the modern Bibles, verse 38, changes forces to fortresses. Now, I have seen the Star Wars movies. And they're out of order, so I can't tell you which one's that. But I have never heard them say, the fortress be with you. Have you got your fortress field? The media, when they report a story about wars and common, they don't say, well, the armed fortresses are, are on the move. A woman about to be raped stands at a trial and says, well, he fortressed himself against me. You, you modern Bibles are... And you that get them and read them, you're crazy. You tell them I said that. And the reason why they change the forces to the fortress is so they don't expose Satan, who he is in the last days. Because you get a modern Bible in the tribulation period, well, we're looking for a fortress. Well, the King James Bible says you're supposed to look for a force. What if Satan does come up like the movie, where, you know, they're lightsabers and force be with you, tell her, telepathic powers to move that table over there and, and move the fruits over there. And, and, and you say, well, that's like Star Wars. But my modern Bible doesn't say that. Ah. You would think that the whole thing, the conflict of the Star Wars movies and the Force on that would be written by the man who knows the Bible. You talking about George Lucas? No, I'm talking about Satan himself. I'm talking about the very being that quoted scripture to Jesus. You know what's wrong with some Christians today? They can't quote scripture, but Satan can. And the scripture they always quote, they take out, judge not, least you be judged. You're judging me. So we got the God of forces. It's changed in the modern Bible, so Satan will not be exposed 
And George Lucas got his force to be with him from the Hindus, from the Buddhists, from the Taoism. It's called Chai, C-H-I. It's an energy that saturates all things. Well, doesn't the New Age people say, God's in the trees, God's in the rocks, God's in the waters, God's in the birds? That's the God of the, of the tribulation period in Satan. He's everywhere. I heard a fool the other day say, a Christian, well, you know, Satan's everywhere. You haven't read Job 1 and 2. Satan is not everywhere. You tell him I said that. You give him this video. Luke 10 and 18. Look at Luke 10 18. Did you realize? I mean, what this is all going on, and Christians are ignorant because their pastors ain't teaching them. Watch the power of Satan. No, the 12, 12 chapters of Daniel, we can do it in six weeks. You're a lazy pastor, you're an ignorant pastor. You'll stand before judgment of God, judgment seat of Christ, a great white throne judgment. Look, look at look at Luke 10, 18. You know what 18 is? 6 plus 6 plus 6. And he said unto them, Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. That's a power. How 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 is that power? Look at Revelation. Revelation 13. Scripture with Scripture, my friend. My pastor doesn't go Scripture to Scripture. Because he's, because he's too lazy, or he's got a modern Bible that erases the Scriptures. Revelation 13, 12. In the tribulation period. Exercise the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them to dwell therein to worship the first beast. Right, here comes the image that's going to be put into the, the Holy of Holies, but watch it, whose deadly wound was healed. Here's a power of the Antichrist, the beast. He's got the power of healing. Judas had that power when he was in ministry on this earth. Look at verse 13. 13, 13. He does great wonders. He makes fire come down from heaven. That's a power and a force. You know, again, the Star Wars movie, you see those lightsabers, they're lights. One's got strawberry flavor, one's got blueberry flavor, and maybe winter green. And Back to Daniel. You see, the idea of modern Bibles, we'll get rid of, we'll get rid of it. And when the Antichrist comes, Oh, this is like the movies we've been watching. That's like the Star Trek, Star Wars, Battlestar Galactic. Our toys, the, the Saturday morning cartoons that, that my children watch, the, the, the amazing superheroes, The Flash, and Iron Man. Iron Man's in Daniel. We've learned about that. The ten iron toes in clay. Mixed. Satan is getting the world ready and the church is sleeping. I seen in a church, they got these Pokemon cards. They're wicked, they're, they're vile, they're devils. And all. I saw one sitting on a pew in a church. Whose grandparents have, a, have authority in that church. Well, you know, I can't say anything because they're, they're, they're not my children. They're, they're my grand. Yeah, they're, if they're under your authority and under your care, you have a say. You just don't want to have a say. Oh, by the way, oh, that's right. Because you're messed up in the Bible, and you're messed up in the music. Okay? You see how it works? You see how slick Satan is? You seem to realize that the Satan's in the churches today, and Jesus Christ is outside the church. So that's the forces. And he shall do according to his will. And that's 36. His will, not God's will. You know what Jesus said? 
He said, Father, thy will be done. God's will be done. The Almighty God's will be done. And he went to the cross. So, I'm looking for my cross reference here. I know it's here somewhere. His will. Somewhere. Isaiah. Isaiah. Scripture was scripture. It's Isaiah, wait a minute, let me find it. I got the wrong Isaiah. Oh, Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Verse 13. Talking about Satan. Look at verse 12, Lucifer. Son of the morning. You know, modern Bible changes that to uh, the morning star, making Lucifer and Jesus Christ the same. That's a great error. Because there's coming a time that Satan is going to say he is Jesus. That's the Antichrist we're talking about, but but that's not what we're looking at right now. Look at verse 13. And thou shalt say in thy heart, Satan's heart, I will, I will exalt my throne. Did we just read that? I will sit also on the mountain. Verse 14, I will, I will. And at the close of Daniel today, we're going to see verse 14 and 15. You're going to be cast down to hell. Satan's will is, I'm going to beat God back to Daniel 11. No, he won't. So 13, I mean 1138, We see, but in state, he'll honor the God of forces, okay? The God, the God, the God. You know what Allah means to the Muslims? The God. You know what scripture with scripture tells you about the God? 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Your, your Baptist churches are not doing well today. The God. Look at this one. Second Corinthians 4, 4. In whom the God, small g of this world, has blinded the minds of them which believe not. At least the light, the light of the glorious gospel. Jesus Christ is the light of the earth. Satan's the, 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 the satanic light. Who's the image of God? The image of God, Satan... The Antichrist has an image. He's going to put it in the Holy of Holies, the image of the beast. The Antichrist. That's Satan. I guarantee these verses have been messed up. And when you mess them up, you mess with the word, and you mess with words, you can't get the cross reference. But look, look at Daniel 11 again. Look how we've gone all over the Bible. You know why Christians don't get it? Because they don't want to go over the Bible. They want it one big handsome package. They want to open up the, their fortune cookie and there it all is. They don't want to study and show thyself approved unto God. And when you don't study, you're not approved of God. And when you're not approved of God, you're going to lose at the judgment seat of Christ. A pastor told me about the uh, the, the Tammuz mass. And he, well, I'm, I'm just going to do it. Okay. I can't force you. I put stuff on my Facebook and I put things out there. You can watch it. You may not watch it. You know what it's about. That's okay. You'll stand before God. And what you think is, oh, if I don't watch it, I won't be. Oh, no, 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 no. If you see the title and you see a description, you are now live. You know, I hold a sign. I sit on the sidewalk, can't stand no more. I sit in a sign and I hold a sign about Jesus, about the, something about Jesus in the Bible. And I've seen people fly by me at 140 mile, miles for a warp speed. And I see them get in the next lane quickly, cut somebody off. 
Because they think if I get if I'm still in the right hand lane, I'm going to see that sign and I'm going to be held accountable. If I get in the left hand lane or if I go flying by, you're still accountable. Because I know how far people can read that sign, and it's usually about how quick you cut somebody off in traffic. So, oh, I can't see it. Yeah, you already saw it. That's Satan, the God. That's Allah, the God. And Allah is not God. The God of this world. Because he takes a whole bunch of Muslims and prevents them from the light of Jesus Christ. And to them, Jesus Christ, you know, he's just a great old fine teacher like the Jehovah Witnesses, like the Catholics, like the Mormons. Jesus is just a good old homeboy. You need someone or something better than Jesus. Verse 1138. But in his state shall he honor the God of forces. That God is Satan, and he be the, the, the God of gods, of all gods. There is no God of force but Satan. And a God, small g, whom his fathers knew not. Shall we honor with gold and silver and precious stones and pleasant things? You'll find this reference all the time to idols and images. Isaiah 44, 9. You see, when the, when the church, the Baptist church, 44, 9, when it's going to have its Sunday school or its Sunday night teaching or its Bible study, you need to slow down. You're not in a race. The scripture says you're to cause them to hear and cause them to understand. And if they don't, you've got to rewind and redo. 44.9, they that make a graven image, you mean like the Antichrist, are all of them vanity, nothing. And they're delectable. Daniel calls them pleasant. To the world, it's nice. You see my rosy beads? You see my little Mary on the half shell? You see my, you know, there are people come up to me, uh, I, are you saved? Do you know where you're going to go when you die? No, they'll, they'll take their cross out. They'll show me their tattoo of, of Jesus. Because to them, that's that's a pleasant thing. The Bible says it's delectable. Shall not profit. Even with the gold. Even with the silver. It's not going to do you no good. Daniel. And you know, you know what another problem with this is? 38. Christians, say born again Christians, have their pleasant things. But in the eyes of God, they're, de they're, they're delectable. They're, that's not no good. Christians have their Pope too, the pastor of the church. I had one man one time, I, I, I'll beat them up if anybody makes fun of my pastor, says anything bad about my pastor. What do, they, what do you do when you hear him say Jesus Christ is a curse? One of my jobs I had, anybody like that, if they, they had a cuss like that. And they found out I was in the room or realized I was, I was there. They apologized. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds. Now look at 1138. God of forces. Daniel 1139. Most strongholds. 
The modern Bible say 38, God of fortresses, but 39 says stronghold, that's a fortress. God knows exactly what he's talking about. So their modern Bible say the God of fortresses, and you move down to 39, You got a problem? With a strange God. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds. Wherever he goes, there's a castle, there's a fortress. He'll do with a strange God. What's that? That's what the Roman Catholic Church has done. You got Munga Munga God? Munga Munga God is a God, a, a son of God? Well, let me show you Jesus. We'll make Jesus Unga Bunga God. Oh, you got Resurrection Sunday? Well, we got Easter. We'll make Easter Resurrection Sunday, even though it doesn't correspond with the Passover. Wherever the Antichrist is going to go, like the Catholic Church and their traditions, when Columbus came over here, In the saint chips. Santa. Saint, 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 saint. That's what it means. They took their gods and cohabitated the, the Catholic gods. There's a church called Much Marriage in Revelation 1 and 2. Again, I, I, I gotta get that right. That's what the Baptist church does today. Satan's coming to churches. He's amen in the preacher. Jesus Christ is staying outside the church. Well, why don't you have happy birthday to Jesus, though it's Tammuz? Don't listen to that idiot over there. He don't know what he's talking about. He just wants to ruin your fun. You give Jesus toilet paper and he'll be happy. I don't think Jesus needs, reverently, I don't think he needs toilet paper right now to wipe his butt. You don't want to pay for toilet paper in the church, so the, so the more money can go in your pocket. Come on. Come on. So wherever the Antichrist is going to go, like the Catholic Church, he's going to bring a God to them. Whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. I mean, everybody's going to love him. He's not going to kick God. He's not going to kick heathen practices. Well, you know, okay, you've got a blood and and and, and bread thing of, called the mass, well, the Baptists over here, they got a bread and wine. So do the Methodists. <laughs> we just get them all together. After all, all are welcome here. That's the Antichrist's move. He shall cause them to rule over many. Many, not all. Not everybody in the tribulation period is going to rule is going to have the antichrist, primarily the Jews, and shall divide the land for gain. That land is the land of Israel. I'll tell you what's going to happen with the land of Israel. All right, here PLO, you get some. Here in the Philistines, you get some. Jordan, you get some. You Catholics, you do a great job. Uh, you, you hinder the, the Christians. Of the, of the holy city Jerusalem with your worthless and, and, and carnal and imaginary. Well, this is where Jesus sat down and talked to the woman at the well. This is where John the Baptist would go potty. This is the place where Mary was born. This is the very place where Mary's water broke. Oh, you Catholics, you know what? You get some of the Holy Land, too. Arabians, you do a good job. Uh, 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 man, you convinced those, those, those Baptists that you knew exactly what you were doing. And here's what Jesus did, and here's what Jesus did. it. And, and the Bible didn't say it, but you said it, You get some of the land. That's exactly what the United Nations done. That's exactly what the President has done. Hey, we want, we want more oil. All right, Israel, give up a little more land. That's exactly what England did. That's the Belfort Declaration book. We're going to give you your land, but we got to give some to Jordan. 
And for a gain, the Antichrist is going to be paid for stealing the land of Israel that the law tells a Jew you're not to remove that ancient landmark. That's in the book of Proverbs too. Eleven forty. And at that time, the end, the end. Here we come. We're coming to the second advent. The king of the south. Uh oh, that's been Egypt. Have you noticed Egypt has been around all the time? The, the, the place is the type of the world. that God told Israel, don't go back there. Here comes Egypt again in the tribulation period. They're going to go in the millennium, the prophets say. Why? You remember that, that, that thing that God told Abraham? I will bless them that bless you. I will curse them that curse you. Well, there was a king in Egypt that cursed the Israelites. Exodus, right? All right. They get the bad part. They get cursed. But there was a king in the book of... Oh, that king in Exodus wasn't a, a, a Egyptian. He was a high class. Isis. A Syrian. We're going to get to a Syrian in a moment. But there was an Egyptian pharaoh that helped Israel and said, Joseph, bring your father and brother in here. I'll give them some land. And I'll give them bread. How does God reward them for that? Some of the Egyptians are going to go into millennium. How's that? And the king of the north shall come against him in a whirlwind. You know, you think that's the Antichrist. Okay. And chariots and upon horsemen, and many ships, and shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. Right, here there it is. There's the Antichrist coming to Egypt. And he conquers Egypt again. He shall enter also in the glorious land, the Holy Land, Israel. And many countries shall be overflown. There's a lot of countries in Israel that don't belong there because he sold the land for gain 39. He's going to say, all right, here's this land. This, this is your land. This is that land from the sea to the river. You know, Jordan, you can have it, but when I come back, I'm going to kick your butt. This is the Antichrist's way. Flattery. You can have the land. I'll be back. Then we read of it. They're going to make agreements. They're going to lie at one table. Here is one of them right now. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom. That's Esau. Moab, that's a child of Lot. And the chief children of Ammon, that's the other child of Lot. There's still Edomites. Yeah, Israel. Isaac. How come I can't say Jacob's brother? Esau. Can't say his name. Moab. And Amen. Well, Esau hated Israel. Moab hated Israel. Amen hated Israel. As far as Moab, there's one that came out of Moab. A Moabitess. Her name was Ruth. And there was some Edomites that helped the Jew. There was some Amen that helped the Jew. I'll bless them that bless you, and then there were some that curse. I'll curse them that curse you. He shall stretch forth his hand, the Antichrist, upon the country. And the land of Egypt shall not escape. They're going to lose. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver. And over the precious things of Egypt. Now go back to what we read about. The precious things, the delectable thing of idols and imageries and, and what's Egypt had? They got the mummies, they got the, the idols, they got the images. Things haven't changed, have they? <clears throat> and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. 
Well, they border Egypt. Tidings out of the east. Now we're in Armageddon. We're at the Armageddon. Where, the, where, where there's a way made for the armies of the east. Out of the north shall trouble. Now they say, well, that's the Antichrist. You mean he's going to trouble himself? That north is heavenly. Look at Psalm 75. Look at Psalm 75, 6. For promotion cometh neither out of the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God is judge, and putteth down one, and sets up another. Where's north? It's God. Who's he going to put down? The Antichrist. Who's he going to set up? Jesus Christ. Scripture with Scripture. I've done no ailment. Daniel. 11. So we've set the way for Armageddon. News comes out of Norb. Here comes God. Mount up, church. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. Alright? Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Let's see what we want here. We want, first of all, Revelation 12, verse 9. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, and called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world, was cast out in the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 13, when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, Israel. See what I mean? Look what's said in heaven. Nor, verse 12, 12, 12, Israel, Israel. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, I'll be there, ye that dwell in them, heaven. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, we're not there, and the sea, Mediterranean, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that his time that he has but a short time. Daniel 11 Daniel 11 Scripture with Scripture Come on pastor, why can't you teach your people and this idiot over here in a t-shirt and, and a night teaching his family on, on video? And then you'll tell your car Well he doesn't know what he's talking about. What do you study? Watch. Daniel 11. But tidings shall come out of the east, verse 44, and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury, destroy utterly to make away many. There's, there's Revelation 12, and there's Saul. The Antichrist is going to know, uh oh, seven here, it's up. You know, you know, it makes it more sure that all the all the, the, the trumpets, the seals, and the vials, every single one of them has the ending of the, the sun goes dark, the moon fails, and the stars fall. Revelation 12. When all the earth is dark, and here comes the light at the end of the tunnel, and it ain't that Satan from the lightning, it's the light of the world. Here comes Jesus. And he shall plant the tabernacles plural, of his palace between the seas of the glorious holy mountain near Israel. And wh what happens to the Antichrist? He builds this great fortress. He's going to defend. He shall come to an end. And none shall help him. Revelation 19 
think it's 19. Alright, Revelation 19. What's the end? Verse 20. And the beast was taken. Oh, well, look at verse 19. And I saw a beast and the kings of the earth and the armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, Armageddon, and against his army, us. And the beast was taken with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which deceiveth them that receive the mark of the beast, and then that worship the image, remember the image, the abomination of desolation, these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning, or the lake of fire burning with brimstone. That's the end of the Antichrist. I'm gonna, we're going to defeat. He's in the lake of fire. There it is, the end. That's his end. And that concludes Daniel 11. You can know. But do you want to know? And God will hold you accountable to what you could know. You say, well, my church didn't teach me this. Well, maybe you should have learned it on your own. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needs not to be shamed rightly divided into word of truth. It says workman. It's an individual. It's you. Now you may not have all the time in the world, but what do you do with your excess of time? 